Hi students, welcome to Chem 300, Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter topic. This is video number 13 and we're going to have a look in a little bit more detail at the Schrodinger model of the atom. Now the Bohr model is the one that we've been most commonly using up to this point where um, the electrons are surrounding the nucleus of the atom. They all exist in um, stable energy levels. Each of the shells is filled before the next one um, starts to fill. And the shells begin basically when a, um, the repulsive force, so the force exerted by the electrons on one another, is overcoming the attractive force, um, which is exerted by the positively charged nucleus. Electron shells constitute the greatest volume of the atom. They take up the greatest amount of space. All the protons and neutrons and nucleons are all um, concentrated in the nucleus. Discrete energy levels um, can be labelled uh, with the capital letters K, L, M, N, O for shells 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Maximum number of electrons which can occupy each shell are 2 for the first, 8 for the second, 18 using that formula 2 n squared which is what we talked about in a previous video what i didn't talk about in very much detail is how this model has changed as a result of the um, not only the work of schrodinger but also heisenberg and Pauli and a few others because the problem now is electrons are neither particles nor waves there's some sort of thing in the middle of those um, they do a lot of very unusual things and as a consequence of that, we've uh, increased the level of complexity that we need in order to try and describe them. What that means in practice is that we um, have to try and just slightly change our electron configurations to what we've looked at in the past. So now we've got our orbitals, we've got our suborbitals, um, we've got uh, overlapping orbitals, we've got energy levels that don't necessarily fill from shell 1 to shell 2 to shell 3. They change as we go um, further through this and you will need a lot of examples um, in class in order to do this. Uh, for this particular video I'm just going to start with the first couple of um, subshell orientations. Um, we've got uh, the SPDF system, which I very briefly alluded to um, in a previous video, and that's why I thought we probably need another one to just pull this out a little bit more. Um, the sharp or spherical um, S uh, is the one that has just the two electrons in it. Um, we move from the S subshell to the P subshell, and there are now six of these. So um, orientations in um, three dimensions basically and pairs of electrons occupying each of these two two electrons here two electrons here two electrons here the property that we need to start um, talking about is a property known as electron spin and what that means effectively is that the electrons um, don't tend to hang around a little bit together they kind of uh, do their own thing in their own spaces as much as they're able to so there's two um, important things we need to remember when we're labeling these. The first thing is the Pauli exclusion principle. Now the Pauli exclusion principle basically tells us there's a maximum of two electrons for every individual orientation, both in opposite spin directions. What does that mean? We'll have a look in a second. The second important one is Hund's rule. And Hund's rule is about electrons in the orbitals being filled up first in one direction the plus a half direction or the minus a half direction and then in the opposite direction so all of this probably doesn't make too much sense at the moment but let's have a look at our two versions of chlorine so chlorine is number 17 in the periodic table so um, under the Bohr model it would have two then eight and then seven so that would be its uh, electron configuration if we're going to consider the subshells and the spins then what we need to do is we need to say, well, that first one comes from the first um, level. There are only S electrons, and so that's 1S2. The second one is going to be a 2S2 and a 2P6. So that's the second of the energy levels with S and Ps. The seven is going to be two, uh, sorry, it's going to be 3S2 and 3 p Five. That gives us our seven. I'm just about over time, but what I want to do is have a look at the fact that when we look at the spins on these, 
So that's the first level. The next level up is going to be a 2S. So this is the 1S. This is the 2S, again, in different directions. 2P has 3. So 2P is another level up. All these directions. Uh, then the 3S is the next one up. Just 2. And when we go to the 3P, and there's 3 of these, we start in the same direction, first of all. And then we start to fill in the opposite direction. So this would be our 3P5. I'm well over time and I want to stop there, but we need to do some more examples. We also need to look at the fact that sometimes we can simplify a lot of our earlier ones by talking about the configuration for one of the noble gases, which saves a little bit of time. Thank you for your patience and thank you for watching.